Hi, and welcome to the very simple lesson on how to play backgammon. I have played backgammon for 30 years. I actually have taught a lot of children how to play backgammon. A lot of people sometimes think that when they look at a game like this, it's very overwhelming. And I'm here to tell you that it's very simple to play this game. And if you watch my few videos, I'm going to show you not only how to play this game as a beginner, but in the later videos, I'm even going to show you how to play it a little more advanced. Okay, I'm going to just jump right into it. What you're looking at is a backgammon board. And as you can see, there are whites and there are blacks. When you sit on this side of the board, you're the whites. When you're sitting on this side of the board, you're the blacks. Now, as you can see here, there are points. And there are six points here, and there are six points here, and down below there are six points here, and there are six points here. Every piece lands on a point. Nothing can land in the middle of a point. Everything lands on a point. And this is a game about being able to move your pieces around the board. Now, as the, as the whites, as somebody here, each, since each player has 15 pieces, um, looking at this board right now, this is how a board is set up. It's something that you just need to remember at the beginning. So I'm going to sort of walk you through it. Since you're here, you have five uh, of your pieces on this side, and you have three pieces over here. Now some people, when they set up the board, can't remember. Does it come? Are these, do these three pieces go here? Do they go here? Do they go here? But a good way to remember it is that it's not against the wall, but it's just next to the wall. Three there, five there, and then these are also my pieces. There's five pieces up here on the right, and up on the left side, there's two of my pieces. Now, if you look at the black um, pieces, the opponent's pieces, you'll see that they have the exact same setup. They have five pieces exactly across from mine, three pieces exactly across from mine, and then, of course, the five on this side and the two on this side. If you're ever in question on how to set up the backgammon board, all you need to do is look at what your opponent's doing and set up on the other side. I've got two dice. My opponent has two dice. And we're not going to worry about this cube here, this red cube that says 64. We're not going to worry about that for a while. That's a pretty advanced concept. This is actually for people who are so good at backgammon that they gamble. So we're going to not worry about that now until we actually just know how to play a single game. Because usually this gambling cube, called a doubling cube, really refers to uh, people who are playing multiple games. Okay, there's two other things I want to point out on this backgammon board before we kind of get started. Number one is, you'll notice that there's a side here where pieces would go. And when you clean up the board and you put them away, and you put all your pieces in here, and the other team puts, uh, opponent puts their uh, pieces in here, that's actually not the only purpose of these. Because in the game of backgammon, your goal is to actually move all your pieces around the board, and I'm going to explain that in a second, but also to move your pieces off the board. So as you move them off the board, usually you sort of stack them back where uh, they belong. Um, so it is significant that these things are here, because you, you will be taking your pieces off the board. The other significant thing to notice is this bar here. It's not... Uh, a lot of people play backgammon, and, and there is a sort of, this, it's like in a briefcase type of uh, case that folds in half. That's where this crease is, but it's actually called the bar. Because as, you'll, as I get into the game, and I'll explain it a little bit, you actually can take your opponents off the board, and when they have no place to be, they are on the bar. Okay, but we'll get to that later. Now, the goal of the game, to win the game of backgammon, you have to get all of your pieces off the board. So since I'm white, and I'm white because these, uh, this is in front of me and this is in front of me, my goal is to take these two pieces here, work them all the way across and down and, and into this, 
until I can get all of the pieces, all 15 pieces, in here. So these two pieces need to come across, down, and in. These five pieces here need to come down and in. These three pieces here need to come in. And these five are already here. And once all 15 of my pieces are in, then I can start taking them off the board. And again, all of the moves are done based on the dice. And I'll get to that in just a second. We're going to take all the pieces off the board, and the first person to get all your pieces off the board wins. Now, while the white player is moving their pieces here and down and around and off, the same thing is happening, although backwards, to the black player. The black player's pieces are coming this way, down to them, for uh, 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 and then around, and they're trying to get all 15 of their pieces in here. Once they have all 15 of their pieces in here, they're going to then take their pieces off and stack them up there. The first player to get all their pieces off wins. Now, uh, one more interesting thing to sort of note to help you with the moves. Most people, when they're starting off in this game, you roll the dice and you count your moves. So if you roll a three and you're going to move a piece three, you go one, two, three. Or if you're going to move it six, you count it one, two, three, four, five, yes, you do count a piece, uh, a point if your opponent's on it, six. So the thing to sort of remember is since there is six of these, getting a six moves your piece from here to here. Uh, move, uh, getting a six would move this piece from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, to here. This piece getting a six a moving six would go one, two, three, four, five, six, and be to here. But notice what you're doing. You're going pretty much across the board to exactly the same pin number, or to the same pin color. So here's a, a, it's on a black point. This, if you were to move one piece six, you would just go to this black point. And the reason that a backgammon board is usually uh, dis different colored is to help you count. You know if you're moving this piece two, you're going to the the next black one from this black to this black. If you're moving it four to there. If you're moving it six to there. Now let's get to the dice because the dice is something that people think they understand but it's a little different than craps and other dice games. Each turn you're gonna roll your dice and when you roll your dice you're going to move the obviously the number of piece, uh, pieces uh, the, the number that the dice comes up but there's something you have to understand. So I'm going to, and that is that, let's say you, let's just work off of this here. You have a five and a five, so that's, that's 10. It actually, though it is 10, and you're, you are allowed to move one piece five and another piece five, you could use move one piece 10, but there is one important thing to know, which is it still is really just moving one piece five and then moving that same piece five. Now the one thing that you can't do is you cannot move your piece and land on a point that your opponent has at least two of their uh, chips. So you can actually land on them if they have one chip and then you take them off and put them on the bar. I'll get to that in a second. But what I'm saying is eventually to just to talk about the movement of moving around the board, you really can only land on a place where there is where you where you cannot move land on a place where there's two. So, for example, if this was my move five and five, and I was to move this piece, it would go one, two, three, four, five. Well, five would be here. I can't actually land here, so this piece cannot move five. Uh, and then, since and just since we're talking about it, can it move 10? Actually, this piece cannot move 10 because you, really, like I said before, it's really just moving 5 and 5, and each time it has to land safely. So it really can't move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because it can't land here. Now, you have two dice. You don't have to move the same piece every time. So you could move these pieces one two three four 
5. Yes, you can move a piece onto your itself. That can be done. But let's let's look here. This can this piece move 5? 1 2 3 4 5. No, because there's two blacks here. So if you were to play an opening move of 5 and 5, you actually can't move these because you can't move 5 here. You can't move these because you can't move 5 here. You could move these but you'd be moving them to a place where you already have your pieces. Could you move these five? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, you could move these five. Now, before I go too far, that was just an example because the truth is, you act a doubles is not uh, is a special move. When you're playing the game and you get doubles, you don't just get to move five and five, but you get to move five and five. And then again, five and five. Doubles actually gives you the value of the two dice doubled, which is, uh, which is a great thing. If you're behind in the game and you can pull doubles, that's always a good thing. So to have double fives, and again, we'll get to this in the playing of the game, you're actually getting a five and a five and a five and a five. You can move one piece uh, five four times. You can move four pieces five one time. You could move any combination. You could move two pieces five two times. So you see what I'm trying to get at is like you each time you are moving a piece the value of the dice. Players start by taking turns and the first thing that you do is you roll the dice and you get going. So let's just start the game and usually when you start a game each player is going to roll one dice. The person with the highest die actually takes that move. So let's start the game. And I've rolled a 2. And this opponent has rolled a 1. I've won because I have a 2. So I get the opening move. And in this case, I get to move a 2 and a 1. So I could get into strategies, but I'm going to do that in the next lesson. So let's just practice the moving in this one. So I can move one piece. One, and I can move this piece two, or I can move this piece two, I can move this piece two, I can move this piece one or two, this piece two. It's the only thing at this point that you can't move your piece to is one of your opponent's points that has two or more of his pieces. Okay, so now it's my, so let me just move this two. Now it's what it's done is, since I'm playing against myself, it's moved, so I have a, a view of the uh, <coughs> of the uh, uh, other side. It's it's flipped the board for me. So now the black player would roll their dice, and they have a six and a one. They could move their pieces if they wanted to. For example, this could be moved one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be a acceptable move. It could be moved one. But notice that this cannot be moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, because there's a piece here. <clears throat> this could be moved 1. It cannot be moved 1, but it could be moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, what's actually interesting is that, and this is very important to note, that even though you can't move it 1, but you can move it 6, if you wanted to get here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points away, you, though you can't go 1 and 6, you still can get here because you could go 6 and then 1. So it's a really important thing to understand is just because you can't, you can move any piece, either the 6 or the 1, <coughs> it just has to be able to land safely as a 6 or safely as a 1. So in this case, this one can move safely as a 1, but it cannot move the other 6, so it cannot get to here. So it can move as a 1, it can move to a 6, but it can't move to a 6 and 1 because of this. It can't move to a 1 and 6 because of this. <clears throat> now this piece here only has 5 possible moves before it's off the board. One, two, three, four, five. This piece cannot move here yet because you can't take pieces off the board until all 15 of your pieces are in this area. So while this piece can move a one, this piece cannot move a six. 
as we've said before, this piece cannot move a 1, but this piece can move a 6. And then it could continue on with a 1. Or the move could be broken up. This, for example, could be moved to a 6, and then this could be moved 1. Or this could be moved 1. Now, <clears throat> the last thing I want to say in this lesson, uh, before we recap, is how would you move this? Well, this certainly could be moved as a 1. This could also be moved as a 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in this case, since the opponent only has 1, since the opponent only has 1, you can take it off, and it would go up on the bar. So let's actually do that. And I'm going to explain the advantages of taking why you want to take somebody off in the next lesson. <coughs> Excuse me. So he's up on the bar. Now my 6 has been moved. I still have a 1 to move. I could move this guy one more. I could move this one more. I could move this one more. I could move this one more, spread them out. I cannot move this one because this is the one. So in this case, I'm going to actually move one more. And now my turn's over. The board has been flipped. And now, as you can see, the white play, uh, players on this side as well. At this point in the game, when you're a beginner of backgammon, don't worry about the cube. Don't worry about making combinations of moves. Worry about just getting the idea of being able to move one, two, three, four across the board. In later lessons, we're going to talk about being able to move in combinations of moves <clears throat> and how to protect yourself and play an offensive game or a defensive game. But that's really, especially for someone just beginning, uh, and especially for children uh, as well, just worry about moving the numbers as you need. Each dice represents one move that one piece can make. You cannot land on a, play, on a player's pin with two or more. If you land on one, you're allowed to take that player off. The goal, as we said before, is to move all your pieces around into here and then to take them off before your opponent can move all their pieces around to here and take them off. This is the end of lesson one. Come back for lesson two where we're really going to get into the details of how to play this game. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.